All right, welcome back. You know, while scrolling through the news and all the stories last night, I, I ran across the next subject, and it's pure simplicity that is what really jumped out on me, right? I mean, you've heard that chance, you know, pay your fair share tons of times over the years when the left needs to raise taxes to fund things like underwater BB stacking or bridges to nowhere. Well, I have, uh, so have a guess How about this, at what percentage of uh, all income tax collected that the top 1% pays? And how about the top 10%? And as I say, this chart is better than a thousand words, right? The top 1% pay an average of $653,000 in federal income taxes a year. The top 10%, they pay an average of around $108,000 in federal income taxes a year. Now, the Tax Foundation reports that the bottom 50%, well, on average, they pay $667 a year. But that's actually overstated, they say, because if we count child tax credits, earned income, food stamps, and rent support, the bottom 50% pay negative taxes, meaning they get back much more than they put in. So let's revisit that, uh, your, your fair share thing again, right? For all the whining about how, the little, how little the top pays in uh, tax, uh, on average, that's just not true compared to that report, right? The share of income taxes paid by the top 1% increased from 33.2% in 2001 to 45.8% in 2021. So if you ask me, the top 1% seems to be paying more than their fair share already. And I'm an ex guest deals in this stuff all the time. He's a wealth management guy. Please welcome to the show, Craig Bolanos. He's the CEO and co-founder of the Wealth Management Group in Chicago. Uh, Craig, I mean, those are pretty staggering numbers. And I, what really jumped out at me was just a chart last night when I was looking through stories. And all of this chatter about pay your fair share... I mean, are, are, what are they just, are, is it wealth confiscation? They just want to take everything you make per year? I mean, where does that stop? We need to have a number, and I know they'll never put one on that because they're always going to want to move it higher. But, I mean, it's pretty stark when you think that they pay 45.8% of taxes when the bottom 50% actually gets back more than they put in. What do you say? We just lost you. We lost your mic. We lost your mic. Me now? Oh, you gotcha. Sorry. You're wondering where it's going to end. Everyone wonders where it's going to end. All I know is this. Everyone puts up all the ratios, and it's fun with numbers, because we always say the wealthy should pay their fair share, but we never define who the wealthy is in this country. I mean, I ask you today, some people pay more for Medicare than others. Is a single tax filer making more than $94,000 a year really wealthy that they should pay more for Medicare? No, probably not. But these are all these little surtaxes that we put in. And eventually, you're all going to run out of spending other people's money. It becomes a problem. I guess it's good we have such a big printing press, right, Scott? And well, and to that point, yeah, right. We do, And we do print, and that's for sure. Our debt's going to be over... 35 trillion, I think, come June. That's next month. And the way this is going, we're at that precipice where uh, we're printing money. We're getting close to printing money just to pay off the interest of our debt, not not even retiring the debt. And one of the things I want to highlight to everybody is is that we're in a situation now, Craig, that um, back in the late 70s, early 80s, when we talk about the last time we had this inflation issue, and we had uh, Paul Volcker, he was the chairman of the Fed, and he ramped interest rates up to say. 19, 20% to kill inflation, right? Ultimately, that's what he had to do to be successful. He also killed the economy temporarily, too. But that's what he did. You know what? That option's not on the table this time around. Because back in 1980, our debt to to GDP, our debt to what we make in this country was 35%. Today, it's 125%. We can't afford to ramp rates up on ourselves that fast, that high to kill inflation because of how much debt our own country is in. What say you? Well, here's what I say. I know we're a long ways away from having a balance-based budget. I know we're a lifetime away from having a zero-based budget, right? But the truth is this. At some point in time, you know, as do I, these marginal tax rates are going to continue to go up. Everybody is as nervous as a lawn tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. What's going to happen January of 2026? Because the Tax Cut and Jobs Act is going to expire. The Tax Cut and Jobs Act will probably not be renewed. And everybody from the 10% bracket all the way to the 37 is going to have to pay more in taxes. And I'm going to be incredibly curious to see how that slows down an economy, especially when we have an economy that is more than 71% driven by the American consumer. Anything that takes money out of the American consumer's pocket, in this case, 
higher taxes is going to be a slowdown to the economy. And we're staring right at, right at that because January of 2026 is not too far from now. One more thing I'll throw on the log, a pile, another log I'll throw on the pile is this. In 10 years time, Social Security is going to run out. And that was coming from, I think, the Social Security Agency that came out today or last night. Again, I saw that headline. Um, and so that'll be another tax, right? Because they're going to say, you don't, number one, everything you thought you were putting away for your own savings, it was just a tax we forgot to tell you about. But that's going to be another hurdle we have to get over, and that's an entitlement, and people aren't going to be willing to give it up. But at some point in time, we won't, we won't have a choice. These things are all going higher, hence the reason why even uh, Warren Buffett sold a lot of his Apple stock, because he thinks his uh, taxes on later sales are going to go up, too. So it all makes sense. The smart people are telling us that's going to happen. you got about 20 seconds. What's your retort? I think... I don't have a retort. I have a comment. Everybody should be doing whatever they can to get as much money into the tax-free safety zone for retirement. That means you can't just diversify your investments. You need to diversify your taxes to protect choice because the winds are blowing and the age wave demographics and unsustainable spending are blowing in a very unfriendly direction. <laughs> that was, I, I couldn't have done it better than that. That's fantastic stuff. But folks, it's also going to be, a, there's going to be a lot more about taxes and the headlines coming up soon. So that's why I wanted to bring this one up. And the perfect guy to have that chat with is Craig Bolanos, the co-founder and CEO of the Wealth Management Group in Chicago. Thanks for being on, Craig. All right, by now you know, I've got my go-to, 